Hello everybody and welcome to today's Destiny video. Well, it's not... Well, I guess it is a Destiny video. Well, today I'm going to be showing you what I do when I make a thumbnail. Now, I've been thinking pretty hard about this and it randomly came into my head that people might actually want to see this. Um, as I did do a video in the past on how to actually take photos in Destiny without all of the HUD. Um, and that actually got well received, so I figured I would try my hand at making a tutorial video again, but this time with my own thumbnails. Obviously, you're not going to copy my thumbnail toe to toe, which is why I do have a template for my own thumbnail. The main thing I'm going to be showing you is the background and the foreground and then the title. So I will get into it. I will cover a few of the basics in Photoshop first. Um, so let's open up Photoshop. Okay, so. What you do, what I do, is I go into Finder, I go into um, Shell. Shell is, by the way, my hard drive, so just don't ignore Shell. Um, and I go into Assets. This is my template folder for all of my things which is template related. Um, so I go into Thumbnail, and I'll open up Thumbnail. Here we go. So this is my thumbnail template. Obviously, this is really plain at the moment, and, and this is what I work with every single day. Now, if I go back here and I go to desktop, um, actually, I'll go to destiny, um, go on trials, because this is the thumbnail I'm making. Um, so this is actually the thumbnail folder. Now, I'm going to go back to my shell. I'm actually going to get it into a new tab and bring the thumbnail into here. So now I've got the thumbnail in my raw folder ready to export. Now, I'm going to open this one instead and I'm going to close down this one because this is actually the one I want to work with. Now, I'm going to call this flawless flawless trials um, and then minimize it a little bit just to get it smaller and then I'm going to make another line which is called exodus blue so exodus blue okay so that's the map I will put that there as the subheading I need to center it and um, if you can't see I'm going to zoom in way too far I'm going to zoom in and um, this little point here uh, you probably can't see it uh, and, in, and this blue line here uh, I want those to I want those to match up. So there we go. That means it's centered. Now it's centered. I can just take it down a little bit. And now I need to add the background to it. So I go to blending options for this. Um, and I go to styles. Um, and I go to this. Now this is my template one. Um, if you want to get this kind of effect, you can go to stroke, add two pixels, and go to cover color overlay, make it black. That's just in case it's a different color. Um, and then you go to outer glow, and this is all my settings for the outer glow, and this is how I get this. Um, particular setup um, so next up I want to get this background to be over everything so I go to my text background layer down here which is right here and I want to press M on the keyboard which actually makes me go into this mode which is not right the marquee tool um, and then I want to select all of all of this and just pr just click the delete key just delete it all um, and then I want to hold down alt now that deselects as you can see there it's just deselected that little bit there I want to do this everywhere except for where the text is um, and my setup is usually I leave a big gap and then I leave little accents on the subheading to make it stand out a little bit more than the title so people can actually see it because otherwise it's just a big block of green and that's not very nice. I'm going to fill that in, um, not with a gradient, with a paint bucket tool. There we go uh, and then deselect by Control D. Now. To actually get the effects I've got in this text background, I'm going to go to blend in options and show you. The stroke is four pixels, the color overlay is my trademark color, and then the drop shadow is all of this. That's how I get that. So I'm not going to tell you how to get the actual logo because that's pretty pointless and unnecessary because that's like specific to me. So I'm going to move on straight into the actual foreground and background. Now I've got to go into Destiny for this because I need the pictures. So let's switch over to Destiny. So we're in the game right now, let's look at what we can use as our main focal point of the thumbnail. I think I'm going to use the Trials emblem, so we need to go to the tower, I will see you when I get there. Okay, so I've just grabbed the emblem, the Hick jacket, let's actually screenshot this real quick. So where is it? Uh, there it is, okay. So if we, so that's actually, I don't know if that's actually bigger than the one in the kiosk or not. Either way, I'm going to just screenshot the one in the kiosk. Um, actually, no, it's actually the same. Okay, so I'm going to screenshot this real quick. I'm actually going to hover over it and then kind of... Oh, no, I can't do that. Okay, so I'm going to just screenshot it like this. There we go. Okay, I've screenshot that. Now let's think about our background. So we've got to go back to orbit because I have a perfect idea for our background. We're going to go to the lighthouse. 
Okay, so we're in the lighthouse now. Um, just to let you know, I won't actually be using an image from the lighthouse for this picture. I will be using a picture from Exodus Blue itself. But this is just for demonstration. Um, just imagine that this is Exodus Blue instead. It's a, pretty much the same process. But also I was thinking I'm going to change that um, picture of the emblem to a picture of a gun. So let's take a picture of the Trials gun this week. The Glass Promontory. Um, I'm going to click on show men get rid of a menu so I can actually take a screenshot. Okay, I've taken a screenshot. Okay, so that's that done. Um, now we actually need a background. So we're going to get our background in this area itself. So let's actually have a look around for a nice area to take a screenshot in. So let's go over here. This is, seems like a decent area. Perfect. So we're going to take a picture right around here. Um, we need a good spot so we can probably sit down um, behind a rock. Do you reckon this will work? Mm, not quite. Okay, so if we go... Oh god, that would knock me off the edge if I did that. Uh, if we could go over here, we can do it, I think. Yep. So if we go here and we sit down, it'll actually force the camera forward. This way we can get a nice screenshot. We want to set this up so it's got everything in the frame perfectly well. That seems about right. I don't want that. Oh, I want that pillar. I like that pillar. Okay, so to get a screenshot, what I do from my old video, you've probably seen this, is press start and press back. Boom. Um, and there's a split second in there where I actually got a screenshot. Now, that is actually going to be able to be used. I'll be able to go back and screenshot just as I got that. So I have a capture card, so it's easy for me. But for those of you who don't have capture cards, you can just tell your Xbox to record or your PlayStation to record and then go back through it and actually sieve out the exact moment or exact frame where you got that actual picture. So good luck getting that. But it's a lot easier if you've got a capture card because you can go back and find it. So, we have got our footage, our clips, should I say, for our thumbnail. So, let's get back into Photoshop and see what we can do with them. Okay, so we're back on the computer now. Let's go over to the Finder again and see... Wait, it's over here. There we go. Um, and see what we've got. So, let's go back to that folder, thumbnail. Now, I've got these two screenshots here. So, this is the sniper. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But this is the background. So, this is the background we got. Obviously, there's a few things I need to do to this. I need to actually touch up the colour. It's a little bit dim. So, I'll actually change that in a second. But first, I really like getting this out of the way first. So, this is the gun. You're probably thinking, hmm, how are you going to get that gun to uh, just be by itself? Now, there's a couple of ways. Um, you can do this, the quick selection tool, which just like... This is the lazy man's approach. You can do this with like smaller objects, but you do this all around it and it gets a rough idea. I really hate doing this. It's really inaccurate and I like saving my images afterwards. So I prefer to use the pen tool. Now the pen tool is a lot more tedious, um, but you get a way better result in the end. It's way more precise. Um, so I will show you the end result. I'll actually speed run this so you can actually see me doing this in the process. Here we go. Okay, once you've got a basic outline, you want to go up to here, up to the top where it says Path Selection Mask Shape, click Selection, and then on here I like to have the radius to 0.5, that gives a little bit of a feather around the edges, so it's not like really sharp, especially around these blurred bits, it looks stupid if it was zero. Um, so there we go, so now we've got an actual selection of the full image exactly on the edges, well not purely exactly, but pretty much exactly on the edges. And then what you want to do is invert the selection. So that's Control shift i on the keypad. Um, and then you want to just delete. And then you've got your sniper, well, or whatever it is you wanted. Um, press V to move up. And now what you want to do is you want to crop it. So I press C on the keyboard to do that. Um, and then you can just, you can either move these on the edges or you can just, um, or you can just select it with the actual tool itself. Like this. Move that around. There we go. I like that. Okay, I want to actually perfect that a little bit more. Uh, let's get that really close in. 
There we go. There we go. Because I'm going to be keeping this forever. It's going to go into my archive folder in case I ever need to use this again. Um, so there we go. I want to save that now. I want to save this. Save as. I'm going to put this in my archive folder now. So where is my archive folder? There it is. Um, so these are all of the ones I've got so far. I've only just started archiving these. Um, so this is called the Glass Trials Weapon. I don't remember what it's called. Weapon. <laughs> there we go. Sorted. I'll be able to. I'll rename that whenever I do know what my name is. Um, but yeah, there we go. It's saved as a PNG. PNG means that the background is always transparent. Um, if you choose to have it that way, um, or you can just save it as a JPEG if you don't want the background to be transparent. Okay, so we've, had, we've got that done now, so we want to go, yeah, don't save. So now we're back to this. Now we want to get that background up, so let's go to that background. Um, here's the background. Now we want to like just bring it in like this, and there it is. So now I want to put that behind everything, so I want to press enter, I want to accept that. Uh, I want to bring it behind everything. Now to make it more editable, because at the moment it's a smart object, um, you want to not make that a smart object, so you want to rotterize the layer, there we go. Now it's not a smart object. Now it's more uh, malleable for us in Photoshop. Um, so as you can see, the color correction is completely off. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to curves at the top here um, in adjustments. If you don't have an adjustments bar, you can go to window um, and you can go down to adjustments here and just click on the little tick. Now let's go back to curves. Um, now we've got our little curves menu. This is just better than color correction in my opinion. Um, and you can choose anywhere on this scale. You can actually choose whether you just want reds and greens um, but this image is pretty broad in terms of colours, so we won't need to mess with individual colours for this one. Um, if it was something like Crota's End, um, then you'd probably want to bring the greens down a little bit, just to make it a little bit more neutral. Um, but we don't need to do that for this one, so we just want to bring the contrast out and make it pop out a little bit more. So we're going to do that right now. Put a little mark there, and then a little mark down here. And we want to balance this giant spike out, so we want to bring that down a little bit more. Um, and then bring this in a little bit more like there maybe down a little bit um, actually a bit more uh, okay that seems to be that seems to be better it's just a little bit of a dark picture I guess oh, okay okay we're gonna mess around a little bit more with this so we're gonna go over to brightness contrast we're going to bring, oh we don't need to bring the brightness up, bring the contrast up a little bit, okay, cool, and then get rid of that. Uh, let's have actually a look at some saturation, because it seems it needs a little bit of saturation. Okay, there we go. We just don't want it to pop as much as it's doing at the moment. Um, so what we want to do with those, just to make it a little bit easier, is select all of those and control E to merge them together, or you can just, um, you can right click and then click merge layers. And that'll do exactly the same thing. Now we've got that done, I usually go up here and go to Blur and go to Gaussian Blur and set it to 3.0. This way it will make the foreground actually step up a little bit more. Okay, so I'll give you a little bit of an example. If you send it up to 6, I used to have it at 6, you just can't see what the hell's going on. Have it to 2, it looks like an out of focus picture and one's even worse. One just looks like you've just taken a bad picture. So I feel that three is the middle ground. Maybe 2.5 is okay. Um, but you can you can play around with that as much as you like. Um, that one's personal preference, I guess. Um, so now I'm gonna bring in the foreground picture. So I'm gonna go over to Shell. That's where my archive is. Um, series assets, thumbnails, PNGs, and let's get the glass trials weapon. Here we go, bring it in, and there it is. Um, as you can see, it's transparent. So we can do that and then bring that into the middle like this. Um, I might want to flip it. No, I don't want to flip it. Okay, so we've got this now. Put that there. Now that's in place. Now, a thing that I'm missing is whenever I make Trials of Osiris videos, I like to have this little piece of paper in the corner with this. So that's completely irrelevant to you guys. Um, but that's just my personal preference along with um, the overlay over here as well. So now, what is left? I need to give this an outline, just to make it pop out a little bit more. So I want to go to Blending Options, Styles, and go on my outline thing. Now I'm going to, one sec, I'm going to show you exactly what I do with that. So my stroke is on 5 pixels. I change this depending on the image. I'm going to change this to 4. Um, actually, yeah, 4 is four's better for this one. Um, and then I have my outer glow to this. It's a lighter colour than this. It's actually exactly 
the same color um, as in between these two colors here um, in the in the hue table. Um, I've got all of these colors saved, so I never ever forget what they are. Uh, I've got a little notepad with all the actual values on to know exactly what colors they are. But mainly this is just to make it pop out from the image, make the actual viewer look at this before they look at the background. Um, so they look at this and the title and they know what's going on. This way, you, there's no confusion in the thumbnails. Um, my thumb, old thumbnails used to be really terrible for this, but I think that I fixed this now. So that is the thumbnail. That is literally it. Uh, I save it as a JPEG for YouTube. Um, J JPEGs just seem to upload faster. It doesn't really matter. Um, I don't need it to be transparent anymore. So there we go. There is my thumbnail for this. Um, if, if you actually do see this video anywhere, um, the thumbnail will probably be a little bit different to this. I will probably have Exodus Blue instead in the background. Um, I'm just going to move um, the, the writing down a little bit. So put it down there. There we go. Um, so I hope that was easy enough to follow. Um, Photoshop is a really complicated program. Uh, if you are a little bit experienced in Photoshop, this would have been stupidly easy to follow. And you probably don't even need this advice. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, then please do drop a like below. Subscribe. All that jazz. And I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Goodbye, Guardians.